Hello, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank you for joining us today here at Camp Common Prayer Day by Day. For the offices that you are just about to uh, partake in. I'd ask that you subscribe to our channel and that you would click on the little bell button there by the subscribe button to get notifications of when I do post the morning or evening prayer. One last favor I would ask is that that you would share us with your friends and those who you think may enjoy this uh, online daily devotional. And maybe we can all become a sort of a church online, a community online. So again, don't forget, subscribe. Okay, bye for now. God bless. Open thou our mouths to praise thy holy name. Cleanse also our hearts from all vain, evil, and wandering thoughts. Enlighten our understanding and kindle our affections, that we may say this office with attention and devotion, and so be meet to be heard in the presence of thy divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good evening, everyone. This evening service is the service of evening prayer for Monday, the 18th week of Trinity. And our service begins on page 20 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race which is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our hymn this evening is hymn number 517. 517. Lord, as to thy dear cross we flee and plead to be forgiven. So let thy life our pattern be, and form our souls for heaven. Help us through good report and ill, our daily cross to bear. Like thee to do our Father's will, our brethren's griefs to share. Let grace our selfishness expel, our earthliness refine. And kindness in our bosoms dwell, as free and true as thine. If joy shall in thy wisdom fly, and grief's dark day come on, we in our turn would meekly cry, Father, thy will be done. Should friends misjudge our foes defame, or brethren faithless prove, then, my 
for this evening service is Psalm number 7. Psalm number 7, found on page 336. 336. O Lord my God, in thee have I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Lest mine enemies devour my soul like a lion and tear it in pieces while there is none to help. O Lord my God, if I have done any such thing, or if there be any wickedness in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto them that dealt friendly with me, yea, rather I have delivered him that without any cause is mine enemy. Then let mine enemy persecute my soul and take me. Yea, let him tread my life down upon the earth and lay mine honor in the dust. Stand up, O Lord, in thy wrath and lift up thyself against the fury of mine enemies. Arise up for me in the judgment that thou hast commanded. And let the congregation of the peoples come about thee, and overtake thy seat on high. The Lord shall judge the peoples, give sentence for me, O Lord, according to thy righteousness and according to the innocency that is in me. Let the wickedness of the ungodly come to an end, but guide thou the just. For the righteous God tireth, trieth the very minds and hearts. My heart com cometh of God. My help cometh of God. Who preserveth them that are true of heart. God is right God is a righteous judge, strong and patient, and God is provoked every day. If a man will not turn, he will meet, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath prepared for him the instruments of death, and maketh his arrows fiery darts. Behold, the ungodly travaileth with iniquity. He hath conceived in mischief and brought forth falsehood. He hath, gra hath graven and digged a pit. And has fallen himself into the snare that he hath made. For his mischief shall come upon his own head and his wickedness shall fall on his own plate, on his own pate. I will give thanks unto the Lord according to his righteousness. I will praise the name of the Lord the Most High. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
Our first lesson is written in the book of the prophet of Ezekiel, chapter 33, beginning at the 21st verse. And it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month, in our in the fifth day of the month, that one that had escaped out of Jerusalem came unto me, saying, The city is smitten. Now the hand of the Lord was upon me in the evening, for he, had, for he that was escaped came and had opened his mouth until he came to me in the morning, and my mouth was opened, and I was not, no more dumb. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, they that inhabit thee, those wastes of the land of Israel, speak, saying, Abraham was one, and he inherited the land. But we are many. The land is given us for an inheritance. Wherefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Ye eat with the blood, and lift up with your eyes toward your idols, and shed blood, and shall ye possess the land? Ye stand upon your sword, ye work abomination, and ye defile every one his neighbor's wife, and shall ye possess the land? Say thou thus unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, As I live, surely they that are in the wastes shall fall by the sword, and him that is in the open field will I give to the beasts to be a devoured, and they that be in the fort, in the forts and in the caves shall die of the pestilence. For I will lay the land most desolate, and the pomp of her strength shall cease. And the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, that none shall pass through. Then shall they know that I am the Lord, when I have laid the land most desolate, because of all their abominations which they have committed. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people are still talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of their houses. And speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will do not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, the word unto them as a very lonely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it, will, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. Here ended the first lesson. Continuing now on page 21 with the Magnificent. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He had showed strength with his arm. He had scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He had put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He had filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he had sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, had hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. 
Amen. Our second lesson is written in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning at the, tw- at the first verse. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed to he himself. There were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a-fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye, have, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. And they said unto him, unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore now, they were not able to draw it for a multitude of the fishes. Therefore the disciples knew whom Jesus loved, said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now they, Simon, Peter heard, now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, his, he grit his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and, he, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other's disciples came in a little ship, where they were not far from the land but as it were two hundred cupids, dragging the net with fishes. As soon when they, as they were come to the land, to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net, to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of his disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and the fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. So when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto them, Unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. And he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, Thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall grid thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he 
he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciples whom Jesus loved, following, which also learned on his, leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? And Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that the disciples should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto them, He shall not die, but if I will that ye tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciples, this is the disciple which testified of the thing, these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself would not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Here endeth the second lesson. Continuing now on page 22 with an Optimus. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, our Heavenly Father, who by thy Son, Jesus Christ, didst call thy blessed apostles and send them forth to preach thy gospel of salvation unto all the nations. We bless thy holy name for thy servant, Remus, Bishop of Reims, whose labors we commemorate this day. And we pray thee according to thy holy word to send forth many laborers into the harvest through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts will be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. 
through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and immortal God, the giver of life and health, we beseech thee to hear our prayers for thy servants, Beverly, Father Jude, Father William, for with whom we implore thy mercy, that thy blessing be upon them and upon those who minister to them of thy healing gifts, that they may be restored according to thy gracious will, will to health of body and mind, and give thanks to thee in thy holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Heavenly Father, help us to trust our loved ones to thy care. When sorrow darkens our lives, help us to look up to thee, remembering the cloud of witnesses by which we are compassed about. And grant that we on earth, rejoicing ever in thy presence, may share with them the rest and peace which thy presence gives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in thy mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today in the office that you had just watched. If you, or anyone you know, think that you may would like to join a more traditional Anglican church and the, and the use of the Book of Common Prayer and that you come to love so much as I do, well, there is in Canada the Anglican Catholic Church of Canada. If you look online under the Anglican Catholic Church of Canada, you will find us there. And in the, there, there's a parish and parishes and missions um, a list of uh, right across the country. And you can go to look to find a parish closest to you. And again, at this time, I would encourage you to subscribe and to share us on your social media. Okay, bye for now. God bless.